Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am not trying to be a channel that only covers rockets blowing up, but I watched the Starship launch and as I'm sure most of you know, it did blow up, but there was an interesting reaction from some of the employees at SpaceX when it happened that definitely gave me pause. Moments after the explosion, this is what it looked like at SpaceX headquarters. <laughs> And no, this is not some out of context editing. This is literally the reaction at SpaceX. And since I'd covered Starship before, I wanted to cover not only this launch, but also why the SpaceX employees had this reaction to Starship's explosion. Because enthusiastic applause is not normally what we see at moments like this. So let's get into it. So as I discussed in my previous video, Starship is SpaceX's fully reusable launch vehicle and spacecraft that has twice the thrust of the original Saturn V rocket. It has the tallest launch vehicle ever built, and SpaceX intends to use Starship to send people and cargo to the moon and eventually Mars. It is basically the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, and SpaceX's goal for this launch was to send it on a round-the-world trip. Basically, it would rocket up in the air from its South Texas launch site, circle the globe in about 90 minutes, and crash back into the ocean. That was it. And unlike a certain other rocket we could name, Starship carried no satellites aboard, and of course, no people. So, yeah. That was the plan. But Elon Musk had tried to mitigate expectations before the launch in the preceding days. He gave the launch 50-50 odds that it would even reach orbit, and said that not blowing up on the launch pad would be a win. So expectations were definitely different than, say, what NASA would offer up for one of their launches. So the date of Starship's launch had been pushed back many times over the last few months, and was even scrapped a few days prior due to a frozen booster valve. But April 20th was deigned to be the day. So at 8.33 a.m. Central Time, to the cheers of the crowd, Starship launched. Eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. It reached a maximum speed of about 1,300 miles per hour and went up about 24 miles. And if you guys remember in my previous video, Starship has 33 Raptor engines, which burn a unique combination of liquid oxygen and methane called methalox. Well, it turns out that three of those engines either shut down moments after liftoff or never ignited in the first place. Two in an outer ring and one of the central steerable engines. Three more outer engines shut down after about a minute and 20 seconds or so. And in this picture, you can definitely see the gaps in the Raptor engines. So about three minutes in, it was time for the stage separation. Beginning the flip for stage separation. But about four minutes in, this happened. Yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously we're seeing from the ground cameras the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Obviously, this is uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. And you can definitely hear like the aww, and then the swell of applause and enthusiasm. And I gotta say, when I first saw this, I was pretty confused. It was like, what? Did they just not see what I saw? Why are they so happy? SpaceX stated that the explosion was a <laughs> rapid, unplanned disassembly which is possibly my favorite new expression for explosion. And its official statement was this. 
At 8.33 a.m. Central Time, Starship successfully lifted off from the orbital launch pad for the first time. The vehicle cleared the pad and beach as Starship climbed to an apogee of 39 kilometers over the Gulf of Mexico, the highest of any Starship to date. The vehicle experienced multiple engines out during the flight test, lost altitude, and began to tumble. The flight termination system was commanded on both the booster and ship. But the second half of their statement probably clues us in to the reaction of the SpaceX team. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multiplanetary. So the reaction at SpaceX is just indicative of how SpaceX approaches the rocket development process. Basically, they are a company that can afford to fail. For SpaceX, any mishaps or accidents during the rocket development process are actually the quickest and most efficient way to gather data. Starship could have spent much longer in development with its unprecedented number of first stage engines and its massive size. But the alternative was to simply get it in good enough configuration and go fly it. And according to SpaceX, flying is the ultimate test and provides the best data. The engineers can then identify what is wrong and fix it. And with that methodology, failure is just a regular part of the process. And SpaceX can afford to use this methodology because it already has three more super heavy rockets that are nearly ready to fly. In fact, according to SpaceX, they can build 10 super heavy first stages in the time it takes NASA to build a single SLS rocket. So SpaceX can launch and potentially land a dozen super heavy rockets in a year, while NASA might only be able to launch one. Now, while NASA spent a decade getting SLS ready to go, it performed basically perfectly on its debut flight. But it took a decade, billions of dollars, and extensive testing and analysis to get there. SpaceX's approach is just to get it on its feet. And it sounds kind of silly, but it actually reminds me of like how I've seen different directors approach the beginning of directing a play. Some directors want everyone to sit around a table, script in hand, discussing this character, that character, this motivation, what we're going for with the play. And some directors just want everyone up on stage immediately, script in hand, and let's just start doing the play and see what the problems are as soon as possible. And NASA does not seem to be hating SpaceX's approach. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson congratulated SpaceX with a tweet on Thursday, adding that every great achievement throughout history has demanded some level of calculated risk. He added that the launch of SpaceX's Starship rocket is, quote, a good first step. So yes, the rocket exploded, but SpaceX is going to get a lot of data from that explosion and learn a lot and will most likely try again in the fall or winter. But that's not to say that the launch was without its concerns. SpaceX is definitely looking at the design of the Raptor rocket engine that powers both the Super Heavy and the Starship upper stage, and it will work on making these engines more reliable, both at ignition and during the flight. They will also have data to look inside the plumbing of the vehicle's engine section that is using methalox. Apparently another concern is the ground infrastructure that supports and fuels Starship before takeoff. There was a huge crater underneath the orbital launch mount and concerns about the damage to the propellant farm that stores gases and liquids needed for the rocket. Solving these ground system issues are just as crucial as dealing with the engines aboard Starship. But SpaceX has said that they learned a tremendous amount that they will implement for future flights. And for those watching on the ground, reports were that the launch was hugely exhilarating. At liftoff, the rocket apparently kicked up huge plumes of sand and dust at the pad. In Port Isabel, about 10 miles from the launch site, particles covered cars and other surfaces and apparently shattered a window of a local business, which I can only imagine those Poor business owners are hearing this noise, seeing the window shatter and going, oh, rocket. So yeah, the enthusiasm and applause was about knowing that this is just a step in their process and seeing this for the success that it was. Progress towards having a reusable super heavy lift rocket. Something we've never had before and something we will need if we're going to be traveling regularly to the moon and Mars, which spoilers, I think we are. 
So what do you guys think? Were you thrown by their reaction like I was? Maybe I'm just still in NASA mode or, or maybe I was just influenced by the recent H3 explosion, but I still see these explosions and my reaction is to just be like, crap. But I don't know, maybe I gotta rethink that. SpaceX is adapting and maybe I have to too. Okay, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.